All right, welcome to my episode today of my V blog. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the SAT versus the ACT. Which test should I take? This is a question I get from parents all over the country, all over the world, and students ask me this all the time. Should my student be taking the SAT test or the ACT test? And today I just kind of want to break down um, a few things that we've used here to help a lot of our clients, a lot of our students to kind of prepare and decide which of those two tests to take. So um, I, if you look on the screen right here, you would see pretty much a chart that I have that kind of breaks down the two differences. But the first thing I kind of want to talk about is the two types of students. So the first thing we do for students um, is to try to determine what type of student you have. So if a parent calls me and says, hey, you know, I have a student, you know, they're a junior, they're a senior in college or a sophomore in, um, in, in high school, and I want to see which test they should take. One of the things I ask them is what type of student do you have? Because the SAT and the ACT, depending on type of student you have, one test leans for leans better for a student over the other. So what do I mean by that? So you would find that one of the things we found out is that a student who is generally stronger in math does it would, would, would be favored more on the SAT. And a student who just generally better at verbal, meaning reading and comprehension, uh, and reading and comprehension and English comprehension does a little bit better on the ACT. Now, when I say does a little bit better, what I really mean by that is because of the composition of the two tests, um, it favors one test over the other. And now, well, how do I know that? If you look at the ACT test, the ACT test is about 75% reading based, meaning that you're using that part of your brain more when you're doing the ACT test 75% um, of the time. So if a student is stronger with reading and English comprehension, the ACT is honestly just a better test for them because they get to show more of that skill set on the ACT test. While on the SAT, it's a 50-50 split in terms of the math and the verbal side. But one thing we found, we work with a lot of students, international students, who obviously English is not their first language. So for them, they don't like the verbal part of any test. So one of the things we found out is the SAT test is a test that they're able to shine more on. Because if you look at the SAT test, there's a separate math section and a separate verbal section. While on the ACT, if your verbal isn't very strong, and even if your math is, because the ACT is averaged out, the ACT, um, if you, and you have a weaker verbal section, it's going to hurt your ACT composite score. So let's um, turn our sights right now to this chart that I have on here um, on the screen. If you look at this chart, this is a chart you can get on our website and I'll show you how to get down on our website on successprep.com later. One of the other advantages that the SAT has over the ACT is that the SAT actually has more time. This is the new SAT, the one that just launched in 2006. Um, and on the new SAT, you just have more time. So if you look at this chart right here, you could see if you compare time to time on both sections that each section, the, ACT, the SAT has more time each time uh, when you compare it to its ACT com um, um, com um, component. And if you scroll down some more, you would see here the same time issue kind of shows up as well. Another thing that I, we see in our practice here at Success Prep with um, a lot of parents and a lot of students is a lot of students and parents think that the ACT is actually easier as a test. It really isn't. Um, one of the things we're finding out on, on the ACT now is that the ACT is actually bringing on um, even up to pre-calculus level content um, on the math side. And that is actually, you know, for us as test preparers, a little concerning because not a lot of students get to take that higher level math in, in high school. And so that's another um, I, I, another thing we are seeing. That's a light, slight disadvantage on the math side of the ACT. So again, that kind of um, gives you kind of a quick breakdown. Just want to kind of share with you the SAT versus the ACT and things to look out for in the two tests. The SAT has more time on it. Uh, the ACT lends itself for a student as stronger in verbal while the SAT lends itself to a student that's actually stronger on math. And just to wrap this all up, um, there was an article I actually read uh, a few months ago now um, from Georgetown, where Georgetown actually did a quick study and said, hey, let's see, look at students that are turning in SATs to us and students that are turning in ACTs to us. And they found out that if a student turns in an SAT score, that student is more likely to get into Georgetown, which is a really prestigious school. So there you have it. Um, just a quick breakdown of the SAT versus ACT, which test should I take? You really, at the bottom end of it, want to determine what type of student do you have? If you have a student that's stronger in math, you want them to go the SAT route. If you have a student that's stronger in verbal, you want it to go the ACT route. And there you have it. Thank you very much for listening to my, to watching my video today, and I'll see you next time.